Marijuana is often called a gateway drug, and pot use has skyrocketed in the United States, doubling in the past decade. Marijuana use among American adults rose to almost 10% in 2013, or more than 22 million, mostly recreational users, according to government surveys. 23 states have legalized marijuana in some form. Four states and the District of Columbia have legalized it for recreational use. Deputy Director for the National Institute on Drug Abuse, Dr. Wilson Compton, joins us from Washington. The authors of this study, Dr. Wilson Compton, I'm told, uh, collected publicly released surveys and government numbers and things like that. They did not look into why drug use has skyrocketed. To what do you attribute it? Well, these surveys were very large public health surveys. So they went door to door and interviewed people all across the country to really do a, a, a proper estimate of how many people are using marijuana and other substances. So it really is a very comprehensive look at drug use all across America. The survey doesn't tell us why people might be increasing their use, but certainly we've seen a changing in the attitudes and policies towards marijuana that might give us clues that people are more willing to use marijuana than they used to be. What does it tell you that the rates increased most notably among middle-aged adults and those who are 65 and older, black and Hispanic people? Well, particularly when we look at middle-aged adults, what we see is an aging of the baby boomer population. So the very habits that people had when they were younger, they're carrying with them as they get older. Okay, so that explains the 65 plus uh, middle age. By the way, I consider myself middle aged now, and I'm a Gen Xer. What did, I mean, you would think that it would be the parents, the people who came of age in the 60s and 70s, who would have made the most of weed. Well, they might have, and those are the first ones that are hitting that sort of 50 to 70 year old range. So I think when we look at the middle aged and slightly older, we are seeing a change based on a shifting of the overall population of the country. But we have seen increased uh, uh, use of marijuana because of changing attitudes, because of more acceptance, uh, less concerns about the potential harms. And yet marijuana is not without harms. This study shows that about 30 percent of the adult users end up with having a diagnosable abuse or dependence on marijuana. That means they're using it even though they might not want to. They continue to use despite problems. Even though it's causing social issues, they continue to use. Those are the kind of issues that people report. The people who are dependent on it or are abusing pot, would they benefit from some sort of um, treatment? I mean, are they self-medicating? Well, people sometimes think marijuana can be just stopped like, you know, an innocent habit. But indeed, many of the people who have an addiction, a dependence on it, do need professional help to uh, quit. We find that some people even have mild, uh, not life-threatening, but significant withdrawal symptoms. They can't sleep very well. They can't concentrate. They may get headaches, may have trouble eating. And so they find that they use marijuana to keep from having those unpleasant feelings. When we're talking about medical marijuana, you know, the FDA requires carefully conducted studies in hundreds of thousands of human subjects to discuss the risks and the benefits. And so far, researchers have not conducted enough large scale clinical trials to show that the risks of marijuana outweigh the benefits. And yet, um, it looks like there's only one place where researchers can get hold of pot to study. It's at a federal facility in Mississippi, and you have to go through the DEA to get access to it. A lot of researchers complain about it. Should there be more scientific research on, on pot? Well, certainly we believe that there are very promising products that could come from the marijuana plant. The chemicals in marijuana may be very helpful for such conditions as pain, possibly even for epilepsy, possibly even for other conditions. So we would like to see greater research done both with the marijuana plant itself and particularly with the chemicals that come from that plant. The plant itself is not ideal because it has many, many chemicals in it and it's taken typically by smoking, which doesn't really sound like a medical product to me. Dr. Wilson Compton, thank you so much for joining us this evening. You're welcome. CBS News Health Watch, presented by Cancer Treatment Centers of America.